Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Daniel Rosal here. I want to do a video today on something slightly complicated, but um, I think it's important. I just want to talk about if you are using OBS Studio on Ubuntu Linux. Um, I'm not sure which Ubuntu I'm on. There's a point where I just kind of like stop caring. I'm on, I think I'm on the LTS release cycle. So it's like the latest LTS Ubuntu. In other words, it's pretty recent and I don't think they've made any significant changes to the very basic uh, audio recording GUIs anyway. So um, what I want to talk about today is how you can use a program called Pulse Effects. Now it doesn't come, it's something you have to add to your distro. Um, this is uh, Pulse Audio Volume Control. I tend to call it PavU Control because that's its, uh, <laughs> that's, its uh, that's the command that launches it, but I think its real name is uh, Pulse Audio Volume Control. So it's a GUI for this. You probably already know this if you're watching this video. But what I want to talk about today is how you can use Pulse Effects to apply some equalization to your microphone and more granular uh, changes really uh, that when you're recording into OBS. So I'm going to explain that in OBS there there are tools available there uh, for doing stuff like noise suppression and uh, de-reverb etc. But if you patch your audio through uh, Pulse Effects, you're going to get like more um, you're going to more options. So the purpose of this sort of screencast or video, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to just try to explain how the relationship works between these moving parts because that's basically what they are. So the first thing here, you're looking at the levels of, um, of uh, the lab microphone I'm speaking into as I record this. And just something about Pulse Audio that I think is worth knowing. There's two pages. When, when you're looking at recording, you've got your input devices and you've got your recording tab. Now, the way this works is as follows. Your input devices, you're going to be applying levels here that will reflect across all applications. It's at the kind of interface level, right? So I'm adding the, I'm upping the levels now on the mic and you might be hearing the audio clipping and now I'm dialing it back. Now this is going to inherit across all applications listening in to that microphone or, uh, you know, to use more accurate terminology, capturing the input stream from that microphone. So I'm recording this uh, screencast into simple screen recorder which I'll drag over here for a second. So you can see there's only one application taking this audio stream. Now, if I, make, if I make my changes here, they're only going to apply in Simple Screen Recorder. So my recommendation or what I do uh, when I'm trying to get my levels right, and this is an ongoing process of improving my audio. Uh, I always clarify, I'm not sort of trying to lecture here. I'm just explaining how I do it. Um, I always start here. And there's one more one thing that's worth pointing out that I feel like a lot of people will miss because you have to undock the advanced setting. I'm sorry if there's drilling noise available, audible in the background, ironically, because I'm doing an audio video. Uh, there's renovations going on like next door. Um, in any event, latency is something I've covered before in OBS and correcting uh, problematic latencies on your microphones. So one thing worth knowing is that you can actually set a latency here. It can be a positive or a latency or a negative latency um, in milliseconds, right? So again, from my opinion, if you have a microphone which has latency issues, it's probably something that's going to apply across your applications. So yes, you can uh, set that in OBS, but I kind of think it actually makes more sense to do it here so that, okay, every, every app, whether you're recording directly into a browser, recording into Twitch or recording into OBS, whatever you're using that microphone for, and you know it's like 20 seconds generally behind, if it's consistent across applications or you found it, I think it makes much more sense to do your latency here. But of course, it's up to you. And this is especially useful, by the way, if you're recording the microphone into an application that doesn't have a latency uh, editing tool. Okay, so that's tool one in our, in our sort of cadence, if you will. Next one is gonna be Pulse Effects. So I'm gonna open it up here. Okay, the way Pulse Effects is organized, now I like to keep these all open if I'm using Pulse Effects, but I, this, this, and OBS, and I'm gonna open OBS in a second here. The way Pulse Effects works um, is kind of as follows, it's pretty interesting. You can equalize your output or your input. So I'm gonna click on input by going into microphone. Now, by default, my microphone is recording into Simple Screen Recorder, but I'm not doing anything. I'm not applying any uh, anything from Pulse Effects. How do I do that? Really easy. You'll get a list of the applications that are grabbing your audio stream. And all you need to do is click on the plus icon. Now we see 
the um, frequencies, we're getting kind of an equalization thing, and we're getting a uh, we're getting another level adjustment. So I can and you should have just lost me for a couple of seconds if everything went to went to plan. Uh, there's no latency here, and you get a little bit more details about what you're recording. Now. Um, I'll open OBS in a second. I think it's beyond the scope of this video so as to not control, not uh, not change so many things, but there are some really, really useful uh, things you can do here. If I click on if I click on stereo tools, now I have a microphone in which the um, left channel, sorry, the right channel, it does not record. Um, it's a Behringer UM240 interface. I posted on Reddit and I was like, guys, is there anything that can be done? Because I have this microphone, um, it's an XLR and it goes in through Behringer and I thought it was working great till I listened to my uh, video of mine on my TV and I was like, opened it up in Audacy and I'm like, oh wait, there's no right audio channel. Um, it's only, it has to capture in stereo but there's nothing coming from the right channel. And I asked him one of the subreddits, I, can't, I think it was the Ubuntu subreddit and I was like, what can I do? Because I can obviously go into Audacity afterwards and uh, mute out the right channel and export the audio, but there must be some way I can like do this on the fly and people recommended Pulse Effects. So thank you Reddit, as I've often uh, said, uh, Reddit can be super helpful. Um, and this is what you want to do, stereo tools and you can mute either the, either the right or the left channel. So I'm muting the right channel now, unmuting the right channel, muting the left channel, etc. So really it's like this pulse effects thing is like super granular, there's so much you can do. I'm gonna take off stereo tools. Now as I said, this, I'm gonna be a bit childish for a second and you can turn on pitch. Uh, pitch modulation and make myself sound probably like a... Um... <laughs> but um, this thing this thing works on the fly so there's no there's no lag as I'm uh, changing stuff here it's going to be playing now look at the waveforms that we are looking at and look at their height now watch what happens when I change stuff now there can be we can get some kind of uh, things are dropping 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 so this is this is why I describe it as kind of a cadence you've got this passing into this. Now I can actually adjust just to make things slightly more complicated again. Um, I have the input stream. I can see the input from Pulse Audio going into Pulse Effects, okay? And I can actually decrease the levels going into Pulse Effects or I can actually mute from here the microphone. And now you're seeing that none of those uh, waveforms are, uh, are active. So if you want to click onto applications, uh, you can get back to the, the main area and that's where um, you can again just control where it's going. So we've covered so far uh, Pulse Audio, Pulse Effects and their relationship. Now let's get into OBS Studio. Now obviously you don't need to use Pulse Effects at all. You can just record directly into OBS. Now let's see what's going on here. The first thing I need to do is uh, is set my audio source to my Ono. Um, now it can be a little bit buggy sometimes. I'm getting like two OBSs here. So I'm gonna turn on OBS one. Um, now you can see the, re the recording input here. Linux is naturally, you know, gonna be a sort of a buggier, buggier operating system in some respects. And uh, sometimes you do get issues like this where you're just not seeing a microphone source. So uh, sometimes the easiest way to fix it is just to exit out and exit back in. But let's go back into OBS now and we're still not seeing those levels um, from this. So I'm gonna have to try to diagnose this issue now. Uh, but I'm going to not redo this video. I'm actually just gonna try figure it out on the fly because um, it'll, it'll make things more interesting. So we're looking to record into, um, into OBS. And um, if you look for input devices, you should now see in the recording tab the application for uh, for OBS. Now you can see the problem, I've identified the problem right now, it's that the channel is muted and as I've unmuted um, OBS in volume control, I don't know why it was muted, I'm now getting the level in OBS. So um, if you're having microphone recognition issues as I just did unexpectedly, um, that's why I always like having, because this is like the master, 
this is like the intermediate and this is the application is where the audio feed ends up. So now that I've unmuted the channel uh, and as I play around with the levels, you can see my OBS levels are changing. Now, uh, let's get back to the, the meat as I called it of this. So there's two OBSs and again, this is kind of buggy because I'm like, well, which OBS are we talking about here? Um, if I apply, if I turn on this OBS switch, now if I mute the microphone, we should see the level in OBS falling to zero and that's exactly what we're seeing right there on the left. So this is the OBS, don't ask me why there are two uh, OBSs showing here. If I mute this one, if I mute this one now and unmute this, uh, we're not seeing the level affected. So this is just kind of, this might be a, mo I think this is picking up a monitor feed, okay? So this is my OBS. Now, uh, what I'm able to do is, uh, again, if you want to verify, change the levels and pulse effects and you'll see the levels being affected in the application. And now you can apply everything you can do with pulse effects. Um, very useful things that you're able to do, like turn on an equalizer and change, uh, change frequencies. Um, if you're using a microphone with that issue about stereo I mentioned, you can go ahead and change that here. Um, one last thing in this kind of video um, that I want to say is as follows. You can do some of this stuff, equalization, editing, input sources on the fly in OBS. The way you do that is you, um, is you look at your microphone uh, source and you can apply uh, filters. So let's say now this isn't the microphone source. Um, I'm using it, I have to add it, but let's just say for argument's sake it was. You click into filters and you've got these audio filters, compressor, expander, gain, uh, invert polarity limiter, noise gate, noise suppression that you can apply. And if I go into gain, uh, you know, you can apply again. So this can be done, I'm gonna remove it. This can be done in OBS. Um, the advantage really of doing it in pulse effects is you're gonna have a lot more options in terms of effects you can apply to the live input stream on the fly. Um, and it's kind of, once you have your microphone sounding good, it's a good idea to, uh, to monitor it with headphones um, as you're trying to make these changes. And that's um, another video basically because that can be complicated in its own right. But once you have the microphone you know, sounding good, um, I kind of think it's nice to have everything set up here. And in OBS, you can just worry, you can just take the microphone input and, um, um, and then you can uh, just focus on the other aspects of your OBS stream or recording. Um, in order to monitor, I've done a separate YouTube video about that, but there is a playback. You should be getting a uh, monitor for that input um, and you can turn that on and then listen to that through stereo headphones. Um, it can be a bit finicky, but uh, when it works, it works nicely. And that's uh, just an easy way of figuring these issues out. So that's basically the triad of PavView Control, Pulse Effects and OBS and how they can be used together to apply uh, effects in real time to your microphone or recording source if you're recording in OBS on Ubuntu Linux. Hope that video was useful and if you'd like to get more videos from me, please subscribe to this YouTube channel.